bad of a commentator? I mean, do you want my honest opinion? Yeah, or do please. You want, I mean, just give me your honest opinion. Yes. All right. What can I do yeah, to improve? Yeah. What can you do to improve? Uh, I guess to to start, you want to make sure you're talking about the match the entire time. All right. Um, if you're not, it, it should be like between sets or something. Uh, uh, if you're not going to be talking about like. I don't know, the set itself, I guess it wants to be something that like people in the chat want to hear. Like I if that's constructive to like the match. I mean, experience. even if it's not constructive to the match, they have to be able to understand it. So, like if you're talking about your friend and they don't know who the fuck your friend is, then yeah. it's like, okay, well, why are you talking about him? Um, similarly, if it's like, if you want to say something, but you're not entirely sure of the validity of your statement, there's like what I like to call commentary option selects that make it so that when you say it, you're never wrong. Um, for example, like if you think a player does something, uh -huh. like uh, for the sake of an example, let's say Mafia does a move and you say, oh snap, I think Mafia could have flow cancel up air there, right? But you don't know if you're right. A way you can say it that doesn't make you sound bad is say, he may have been able to flow cancel up air there, but he's good enough of a player that the option that he chose probably still works. And then that way, no one can get mad at you for saying, oh, he's dumb for not knowing something about that character because you put it in a way where it's like, oh, okay, he's still giving the player credit. Um, you always want to give the player credit just because like there's a reason they're up there and we're not. Yeah. Like, we suck and they don't. Oh, yeah. um, but it's just kind of like things like that that help people just kind of be like, oh, okay. Um, and I guess other things like it depends on the crowd too. We're in New England. We kind of like different things than other places do. Uh, so appeal to the crowd and talk. oh, you always want to appeal to the crowd. You always want to be yourself. Um, first and foremost, be yourself. There are going to be people who hate on your commentary, no matter how good or bad it is. No, dude, I've um, read some Joseph Smith stuff. Whatever you do is evil for somebody. Hey, like, like literally, like uh, I remember after Shine 2016, because uh -huh. uh, I commentated for uh, Melee Top 48, and uh, up oh, to oh seriously, yeah. How do you think you did? Um, me and Clue did great. Me and Kevin M also did well. All right. Uh, That's it was kind of like we had like a commentary feedback thread afterward, and we were talking about like, I mean, you know, he said give your feedback, whatever. A lot of people didn't say much to the actual like Reddit thread itself, but like I went back and watched the entire vod of my commentary block just to like read the Twitch chat, see what they're saying. Um, uh -huh. Like, there's a lot of people who say the positive stuff. And that's kind of what you look for. For anything that's negative, you just you look at it and see if it makes sense. Because some people are constructive and some people are just haters. People like your commentary fucking sucks and say fuck you because they're not helping you get better. And if they're like, oh, oh your commentary sucks, sucks but you might have done this. Exactly, right? Uh, then you can be like, okay, I kind of agree with that. Or uh, I, I, mean, I acknowledge I'll, that. I'll acknowledge right? it and you, at least you are kind in your constructive criticism. Alright, okay, so to recap, just like talk about what's constructive about the match. Right. And, you know, don't, and like, talk about things that aren't constructive about when the match, but like, people will understand and will have proper context. To it. Right. Because your main goal as a commentator is first and foremost to be able to make the experience good for the viewer. So like, for example, you know the phenomenal EE, e., right? Yes. I will tell you that his freaking knowledge of Smash 4 is pretty limited, I'm gonna say. Uh -huh. But, he manages to make it entertaining just through the way he delivers and what he says. But a lot of what he's saying isn't actually like that insightful at all. It'd be like, oh, he got a two frame. Everybody knows what two frame is. But he never says anything like character specific. Recently, he's been trying a lot harder to learn more about the game. And you can notice in his commentary now that it's a lot more specific in terms of what he's saying. But it's very clear that TK knows a lot more about what's going on than he does. Yeah. Um, so it's well, just TK stuff like that. Well, TK plays a lot more than uh, he Right, does. exactly. I'm not even sure if he, uh, like TK plays Wii Fit Trainer. And uh, I'm not even sure who he plays. I think he plays Mario. So I guess I guess the main thing is that um, just just don't be like don't think or no the way I can word it is be somewhat formal but you know stay on point stay on track stay on track pick either whether you're gonna be color or whether you're gonna be um, play by play right. uh, do you do you know what those terms mean color or play by play right so so usually I know what play by play but what's color color is 
basically what ED is. Um, play by play oh, so usually analyzes analyze like D1. what's going on as it happens and tries to explain it to the viewers so they can understand and digest it. Uh, color is kind of like they just try to keep things entertaining and uh, like hype. fill in downtime and hype and things All like right. that. Um, usually a commentator is one or the other in Smash. It's like they kind of alternate a lot or uh, they try to be both, which is. Uh, Interesting, but also because since Smash is grassroots, they don't really have like a dedicated kind of way of going about it. Whereas like the LCS or something kind of forces you to apply for one of those two positions. Um, but most importantly, above everything else, just try to be a critical thinker. If you see someone do something and you're like, oh, that was bad, you can't just say that was a bad back air. You have to say that was a bad back air because, or he did that move. Why did he do that move? Because he thought he could do this. Or, I think he did it because he knew that. It's just, it's just that extra step of thinking that makes people think, oh, what he's saying is legitimate. Because you can be saying all the wrong things and still be a good commentator. Trust me, I do it all the time. But uh, that's pretty much all I have, I have to offer at the moment. All right, I want to thank you for being like legitimately like, uh, like uncensored. Oh, oh, oh of course. I mean, I, you know, I suck. <laughs> it's like, I, I need constructive criticism like that. There's a time where everybody sucks ass. I was there. It was. It's, it's a learning experience. Trust me. Yeah. Nobody starts with a savage. Um, but as we say that, we're getting back in this fucking right, <laughs> set. That back I've been talking about commentating for way too long. Right. But uh, he loses Nana there. Kind of sucks. Um, but it is still a pretty tight game. He is up on percent, but he is so close. So you could look at it as a disadvantage. Um, but I don't know. BBB's holding, flexing. Uh, BBB's made comeback before the Peach, if we've seen the last set. BBB is the high school. Yeah, BBB, I know. Oh, yeah, you, you mean yeah. against Peach? Yeah. yeah, against Peach, I mean that's what I mean. All right. Like we just saw right there, he just put it in his favor, but now he's probably going to get killed by Rhyme, which then brings it back to an even game. Even game, yeah, but there you go, there it goes, right? Uh, gets sent off stage by the mayor, and now he's coming back, but he does have a Nana, wobble on the table. Yeah. Um, Peach is facing that duh face. She's not really a person, she's just sitting again and still Oh god. Shield damage. Nana's just taking so much. Hot shots. And you know, the thing that kind of happens is that, uh, oh, got a wobble. Oh, got cool. a wobble. Right? Uh, infinite numbers is actually great at this, right? He's great at. Because when Peach does a float cancel aerial, it's not like she's safe. Uh, on shield, yeah, she's positive, but like, you can still, like, if she whips it, you can punish that. Yeah. Um, and Infinite Numbers is amazing at just kind of like baiting moves like that out and then getting a wobble off of it. No, um, if you've ever seen his Mac D set at Pound 2016, that's all he did to get a wobble. Just wait until Mac D spaced the move incorrectly right, and then, and then you dash go and jab to walk exactly. Um So that's one of the ways that Ice Time is kind of have to flex in this matchup. They don't really have too many options to kind of like deal with the kind of bullshit that Peach can do. But that's one thing they can do. Um, if they see that she's coming in a lot with some sort of full cancel aerial, they can also just throw out a, a Blizzard desync and then try to get a grab that way. But uh, it looks like it doesn't matter at this point what he can do with his Nana because Nana's now dead. Uh, he's gonna have to flex on his own. With so close. Not impossible, but... Right, I mean, this is what people always want to see, right? The, the underdog come through and do it in Four City, but in the eyes of many people, BBB has already lost the game. Um, but if BBB can take it, he'll be up 2-0 against the, uh, Peach and all the She'll have to play two games on his counter pick. Or his counter pick, I meant... Uh, uh, whatever. You got it, you got it, you got it. Um, I meant she has in Peach. Right. Like, I didn't mean to refer to Ryan as a girl. Well, that's, well, that's probably what you took it as. All right, move on. Let's move on. Right. right so Ryan takes game uh, two and now they're even. All right. Back they're to battlefield. battlefield. I wonder why BBB would take it here. Um, because this is game. Where, where did they play game one? I guess. Okay. I'm like, well, what, was it was it FD, right? It was. FD, I think yeah, it was FD. It was because FD. I mean, if you can't go back to FD, right? I mean, yeah. I guess his like other options are like FOD or like. I wouldn't do FOD. The platforms can mess you up. They can fuck you up pretty bad. Um, this day, I'd say uh, Yoshi Story or Saber. You know, there she goes. Battlefield, where are we on now? And I'm guessing the greater size of Battlefield allowed uh, ICs to use it to wave that top tier wave dash more. Like you rarely ever have to, I guess, think. Man, Battlefield was a bad pick. Um, because it's, it's generally not. 
It is a, uh, Sometimes you can always think, I feel like there was a better stage, but you can never really be too mad if you lose on the stage and think like, oh man, the stage changed me out. I mean, it's not like one of those kind of uh, stage layouts that really doesn't hurt you. Right. down a stock, and Ryan now getting to make it. Oh wow, and just get double there. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, um, it's, it's gonna be hard for BBB to bring it back. He hasn't even brought Ryan up to 40%. Now he has it. But to even take a stock now after losing Nana twice, it's gonna be tough. Oh, he doesn't have a double jump? Yeah, oh, he does. Okay, cool. Alright, yeah. He'll be able to get back on stage. He's gonna have to side be from the other side now. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He wanted to grab the ledge, but he didn't know, like, because you know how you have to mash squall hammer, right? Yeah, to, uh, you can't grab the ledge while right. you have stone squall hammer. You have to wait until you're in free fall. So he was hoping that by that point he'd be in free fall to grab it, but yeah. he wasn't quite there. Oh, is that? Yeah. Why do you go? Uh, I mean, sometimes Dylan is just kind of like... Uh, I don't care. Sometimes he's on his, like, his, his wobbles mindset, and he just kind of wants to, you know... Or maybe he just thought he didn't have the setup, and he just figured, okay, let me try to convert him to other things. But... Yeah. At the end of the day, the game's about having fun, I suppose, right? So, yeah. Nice kill. Anti air up smash. Finally, Rhyme's first stock goes away. Yeah. Jesus Christ, it's a little too late. He's gonna be able to up and save Nana, but she turns oh, around. Turned. That is. Nana, you're so dumb. IQ is so low. And he is. He's golfing. Wow, I'm surprised that dash attack did not connect, but he hits him with a tennis racket. Yeah, he's not. And he dies. Peach, of course, can buffer uh, what move she's going to hit next with, with her forward smash. Because um, you know how it does the golf club, does the tennis racket, and it does the uh, frying pan, right? In that order? I thought they well, not in that order. It's only, it's, I think it's only in an order in Smash 4. But no, it is. And it's, I play Peach in Smash 4, and it's in an order. Right, in this game, it's not. But if you use one, you'll never get the same one twice. Yeah. So if you do frying pan, then you have a 50 50 as to what you're going to get. So you know how the frying pan sends people up if you're trying to like edge guard or something off stage. You know you've got the frying pan, the next board smash will be either a tennis racket or a golf club. Um, just little things like that help you kind of situate yourself to have the best possible move on deck when you need it. Very solid. Ooh, gets up the back air, not gonna die to that. A double back air will kill though, be able to get it. It's a desync up smash with Nana. Yeah, she's not making it that. And that kind of sucks because uh, with that desync there, he was setting himself up to get a punish for if Rhyme did hit Nana. And he did, but he just didn't know how to retaliate. And now he's sitting down on his last stock. Without Nana, it has to take two peach stocks. This is, this is gonna be something. Yeah, we're gonna be seeing this guy in losers, it looks like. Unless he uh, pulls something out of his ass. Dude, this is nuts. Like, Rhyme is in winners, and like, you know, Mafia isn't. Like, who'd think that, you know, Rhyme right now would be, you know, in winners, and Mafia would be a loser? Yeah, definitely, usually you expect, uh, you expect Mafia, I mean, not Mafia, Rhyme to go out first. But I also think that uh, the way it happened is that Rhyme's got a pretty good bracket. It's not, you know, like, a cakewalk, but at the same time, too, it's not, you know, 